Hello, in the previous videos, we looked at how we could use GPUs to speed up computation with PyTorch. Uh, but even if you don't have a GPU that's CUDA capable, um, it might still make sense to be using PyTorch for some other things that it does. Um, in particular, computing gradients, uh, which are just derivatives evaluated at a specific point, um, that's important to a lot of optimizations and machine learning techniques. Now, I'm not assuming people have a calculus background in this course, although I know a majority of you do. Um, so I'm just going to review some of these concepts. What is a gradient? What is a derivative? And, um, and, and my goal is for you not to know how to compute these by hand, but for you to have an intuitive uh, understanding of what they mean and know how to compute these things um, automatically using PyTorch. So I'm going to head over here, and, um, and I'm doing some imports, and I have some helper functions that are not really important to understand for this demo. Um, uh, do notice that inside of PyTorch, I'm importing tensor. Um, let's take a look at these two functions here. I have uh, two pretty uh, simple functions. Here's a quadratic function, uh, f. Um, it's returning y, which is just x squared. So it's this nice uh, quadratic function like you can see down here. I can plot it. Then I have this other function, uh, d of f, df of x. And, um, and this is the derivative of, um, of the f function. And uh, what that means is that when I feed in an x value, what it's returning is the gradient or slope at that particular x value. And it turns out for this kind of quadratic equation, uh, the slope is going to be uh, 2 times x. And, um, and in calculus, if you had any calculus, that'll be very clear how to um, kind of derive that 2 times x as the derivative of, of x squared, right? So I'm just going to take that granted for granted for now and uh, kind of show you what it means intuitively. And then at the end of this demo, we're going to actually be showing how we can do this computation um, automatically, which will be useful for everybody um, whenever the function is not so easy uh, to differentiate um, kind of manually. So here I have the function. And, and so I have this other thing that I can do where I can plot uh, a gradient like so. And that's taking three things, an x, a y, and a slope. And this is a function I defined earlier. So, so let me do that. Let me try to figure out what the x is. Well, I guess I can just choose what the x is. Let's figure out what the x is at negative 1. And then uh, what is the y? Well, the f tells me, the f function tells me what the y is at x value. And, um, and what is the slope? Well, the derivative function tells me that. So I can see it's going to be um, you know, negative 2 is the slope at that position. So I'm just going to feed that in. Um, the slope is d f of x. And so down here I can I can plot those things, right? x equals x, y equals y, and um, what was the last one? I think the last one was slope equals slope. And, and another name for this is gradient, right? So maybe I'm going to be calling it that uh, more often. What is the gradient at that, uh, at that position? And so I can do that, and I can see that I can really be representing these gradients or slopes at a particular point uh, by these short little tangent lines, right? And so maybe I'm just trying to plot this a few times and, and show, sure enough, um, this function is, is kind of correctly, derivative function is kind of correctly um, computing things, right? So let me, let me do like one more, right? Okay, so this is easy enough. If you had any calculus, it's kind of easy to calculate that derivative yourself. Um, but uh, PyTorch can do it automatically for us, and that's going to help when we have more complicated functions to deal with. So, um, so let me copy this code down here. And, um, and in PyTorch, there's four things we have to learn. Um, we have uh, these three uh, methods. Oh, excuse me. We have these three methods we're going to have to learn. And then there's also this uh, important gradient um, attribute that we can have on, on certain tensors. So I'm going to paste the same thing. And, um, and uh, for this to work out with PyTorch, um, I cannot just have regular floats like this. I have to say tensor like that. And, and it turns out that um, a tensor that just is a single number uh, is also valid, right? And, and so we're going to get some other benefits from that, right? Trying to having these um, scale, scalar tensors, OK? And, um, and so when this is a tensor, I can pass along this tensor as 2 to uh, f, right? And, and if x is a tensor containing um, whatever number, right, I can just square that and then y will be a tensor, right? So I don't actually have to rewrite this at all to start using my f function with tensors. That's all fine. 
Now this here, right, uh, we're assuming that we don't actually know the derivative anymore. We don't have, uh, we don't have the, the df. Don't, uh, don't have the df derivative function anymore, right? So we have to have another way of doing that with PyTorch. Okay, so maybe I'm just going to come back to that. But let me just run this again for a moment and point out a small, I guess the, the problem hasn't shown itself yet, but it will soon. Okay, so how, how can I actually try to get this gradient here? Um, well, the gradient is going to be in this variable. It's going to be inside of x dot uh, gradient. Okay, and, um, and this is not going to quite work. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And uh, well, <laughs> I, keep, I keep kind of proving myself wrong. Let, let me actually do it here, right? So I'm gonna try to plot the gradient. And, um, and, and now the problem is that, uh, that we have none. What is, what is this gradient here? Let me, let me print this off. I have this gradient. Okay, oh, gradient. Okay, and, um, and look there, it's none, right? So uh, it should be here, but it's not there yet. Um, how can we get it there? Well, it turns out that there might be different functions on, on the same x value, right? And, and each of those functions might have a different slope at that particular x position. And, and so that's why I really need to tell PyTorch, right? I mean, here I only have one function in play, but I could have more. So how can I tell uh, PyTorch what, do I, wh uh, what function I want the slope on? Well, I can do that by kind of taking the return value of that function y and say y dot backward. That's a method. All right, so you can see we've done two of these things so far. I've done this backward, and then here I'm getting the gradient. And, and what this will do is it'll take the derivative of y with respect to x, and, um, and then give me the, the kind of evaluate that at that position to give me a slope or a gradient. Okay, so this isn't quite going to work. That. And, um, and it's unhappy. And why is it unhappy? Well, it does, it's saying something about this gradient function. Um, it doesn't know how to do this thing unless I tell it at the very beginning that I wanna keep track of how y is computed, right? Because here it's kind of simpler. I just, I just have one function, um, but but maybe I could be doing something like, you know, f of uh, g of uh, h, right? I could have kind of a chain of things going along. So I have to note at the very beginning that x is something um, that I'm gonna to want to use to compute um, gradients later. Okay, so what I'm gonna to have to do back here is when I create this tensor, I have to call requires gradient. Okay, so I'm going to do this, and um, and now I should actually get. Well, now I was hoping it was going to work. Only tensors of floating point data type can require uh, gradients, and, and and so what it's complaining about here, I can see it's on this line, line one. Um, it only works with floats, so that's kind of an easy fix. I do that, and, and now I can see I actually was able to compute that gradient, even though. Um, even though I don't have that derivative function anymore that I had written. And if I kind of change this, um, that all works beautifully, right? I can see, well, at, at position one, the, the slope is, is two. And, um, and sure enough, that looks great right here. Right? Let me just try a couple more. I try zero, oh, 0, 0, so that it's not complaining about floats. Uh, maybe negative 0 0.3, right? It can compute that. Um, uh, at any given point, right? So it's kind of doing the calculus for us, right? So I'm going to kind of clean this up now, right? What did I have to do here? Well, I had to first say on my uh, kind of initial input variable that I'm going to be computing gradients later. Um, after I got back my result, right? Then I had to say, well, this is what I want to kind of back propagate to find that uh, gradient, right? And, and that could totally be because, you know, maybe I had something like y2 equals, um, uh, you know, f2 of x, right? Maybe I would have wanted to say something like y2 dot backward, right? And so that's how I kind of specify. And then finally I get that gradient, which I can use to use to plot. So very cool. Um, now, let, let me try doing this again. I'm going to head down, down here. And, um, and let me show you one more problem that uh, can crop up. And, and that is going to require us to learn this last piece here. So I'm not going to recompute this. Um, uh, x value, right? I'm gonna leave that like so, and um, uh, but I'm gonna kind of compute that y value again, uh, backward propagate it, and then get that gradient, and, and do that. And I 
on it and um, it's a little hard to see but that's slightly wrong and if I keep doing this it, it gets more and more wrong every time I I do that um, why is that well because when I call this backward thing the way PyTorch behaves is that instead of directly setting this gradient to what it should be um, it adds the gradient to this variable right so this value keeps getting bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller in this case right so I keep running that and you can see that gradient uh, it keeps changing each time, right? Because it's not directly setting it. Um, it's just kind of um, uh, adding to it. And, and there, there are techniques beyond kind of the scope of this course where that's actually a useful thing um, to do, where you don't want to be adding gradients instead of directly computing them. Definitely not useful for us, though. And, um, and so the way we'll get around that is before we do this, which kind of uh, just adds to the gradient, we'll make sure it's zeroed out. I'll say dot gradient dot zero. Uh, just like so and now i can do it every time and it's and it's always the same value right because it's always adding negative 0.6 um to zero right which actually gets us the answer all right so one more time let me review all those pieces right when i bring my input i have to specify requires gradient and um then later i need to uh kind of do backwards to specify what i want to take the uh, gradient on and then i can find that gradient here uh, but the trick is, is right every time I call backward, it's just adding it to here. So um, if I'm doing uh, kind of multiple computations, which actually comes up pretty often, then I will make sure I'm clearing out my gradient uh, before I do backwards.